Hi there, my name is Jane Anderson. I've spent the last 10 years as a personal branding strategist and a career practitioner. But I'm essentially a people marketer. And I'm obsessed about helping people have impact so that they can connect with future employers. So whether it's a recruiter or a hiring manager. What makes me a little bit different is that I come from a marketing background, but I've worked in career management. And so what I do is combine marketing principles and apply them to people so that you can stand out from the crowd and people go, oh wow, this person is the exact person for the job. I'm probably a little bit like steroids in that I come in and I really beef up your marketing. And not that you look ridiculous, but so that when you get in front of a recruiter or a hiring manager or with, these, with this collateral that they go, wow, this person's fantastic. They're exactly who we were after. So for example, I recently worked with a woman whose dream job was to be a Chief Operations Officer for this particular company. And so what we did was we worked with her collateral to shift it from being about her past to positioning her for her future and she was able to achieve the job. So this program, Brand You, is about helping you get clear about the type of role that you want, build your collateral and your branding so that it talks for you when you're not there, and then to be able to, when you get to an interview, that you can sell yourself without sounding um, like you're blowing your own trumpet. Because I don't know about you, but if you're sitting there applying for endless jobs on SEEK, you're struggling to stand out amongst hundreds of applicants, and the feedback that you're getting is that, oh, well, you're not qualified, or you're overqualified, or we chose somebody else. And I reckon we can fix that. And I think between the two of us, in terms of what we can do together, is that we can help make your collateral match the person that you are, so that a future employer and recruiter goes, wow, we need you to work for us. Okay, so I don't know about you, but what I find is I often have clients coming to me going, I can't access this um, hidden job market, or I've been applying for a huge amount of jobs, hundreds of jobs, I'm not getting a look in, I'm not getting any feedback. I seem to apply for things and not hear anything. Um, I'm just not seeming to get any um, cut through or connecting or anything. So I've been in the unemployment market longer than I expected or I'm stuck in this job and I feel like I can't move out of it. And so I find there are kind of um, clients that I see in this space are often trying to apply for jobs in some of the older methods that were that worked when it was an employee's market but it's not an employee's market nowadays it's an employer's market they have a good choice of talent which means that they can kind of muck you around a little bit um, it means that you don't hear things it means that you end up in big applicant pools you know three four hundred people at a time and um, that's extraordinarily tough and it also really affects your confidence. So I want to show you what I find most people find, think that's happening and then versus what's really happening. So the good old days, or the, this process happens probably in between 30-40% of jobs that are out there. The trigger event for the role becoming available is most people will think that the person resigns, the job gets advertised, the recruiter gets hundreds of applications, we go to interview and you get a yes or you get a no and then if you get a yes then the person gets the job if it's no then the job gets advertised and if it's yes and then we just wait got to wait for the person to resign again and so most people i find that they think that that's the process that is what happens out there in every organization and it's not the case what really happens, or this, as I said, probably between 30-40% of jobs that are out there, you'll know if a, if a job is going through this process, it's because the hiring manager or the recruiter or the staff there don't know someone who would be suitable for that job. So let's have a look at what really happens and how we can get this to work for us if you're building brand new for job search strategy. So at the top, the trigger event instead of the person resigning, the trigger event is the recruiter needs to meet their budget. <laughs> their boss, their manager, they have pressure on them that they need to meet their budget this month, otherwise they don't have a job. So they have pressure. the pressure is on for them to find where are these jobs that are out there. And remember, recruiters get paid a lot of money to 
um, place you. So what we want to do is make their job really easy. So the first step is recruiters got to find their budget. They've got to find their income. So what they do is they say, okay, let's have a think about, let's look at the organizations that are going through transformational change or going through restructures or going through growth. Who are those companies that are going to be trying to find someone for these roles? And so they brainstorm those companies or they go to their databases and look at who have we spoken to before? Whose businesses do I know well? What talent are they looking for? So they have to get really proactive. So once they've done that, then they go, okay, well, based on the companies that I know and what, what they're looking for, then we do what we're going to do a talent mapping exercise. So talent mapping is where they identify these are the roles that are going to turn over potentially in the next, could be three, six, 12 months. Then they go out to market. So they go and search candidates. So they say, let's say, for example, this company, we know potentially they're going to, that we read in the financial review that they're, they're changing their strategy and they're looking for, they're going to be moving into um, digital transformation or something like that. So they go, okay, they're potentially going to be looking for digital people. So let's go out to market. Let's go and see who we can find who has that skill. And they're going to go out and search on LinkedIn. They're going to do Google searches, all those types of things. Um, but the recruiter themselves may not do it by themselves. They quite often engage a search consultant. So that person could be here in Australia, they could be overseas, they could be in India, the Philippines, whoever it might be. So somebody out there is trying to find you and we're gonna make it really easy for them to find you. So the next step they do, and I've put it here a bit tongue in cheek, they schmooze and meet potential candidates. When I say schmooze, as in they take them out for lunch, they take them out for coffee, they um, get out and connect and meet with potential candidates and potential clients because they need to get to know who's in the market, who's around, who has what needs so that I can put a square peg in a square hole and get my commission. Then from there, whoops, then once the recruiters met you and they've got all your collateral, so they've got your resume and your LinkedIn and all that sort of thing, the next step is they have to sell you to the client so they don't have to advertise. The last thing they want to do is advertise because they don't want to get to three to 400 candidates at a time. So what they do is they go through this process, they get to know you then because they want to feel comfortable that you're going to be staying in that job because they don't get to keep their commission unless you can get past um, uh, the probation period. So they don't want to go to market, they just want to do it and they don't want to do it quickly. So then they'll take your collateral and sell you in. The next step is that you go to interview, then you get a yes or you get a no and then we go start the process all over again. So what does all this mean? What it means is that for you to be able to access and do Job Search 2.0, you can do the good old days if you really want, but be prepared that your confidence is gonna drop and um, and it's a, it's a really tough position to put yourself in. A, an insurance policy to put this around and give yourself the best chance is to get proactive. So the way to do this, to get in front of the recruiter turn up in the talent searches and the search candidates and turn up in the talent mapping and to get in front of them you need some really good collateral so because we've only got a few seconds when we connect with them that they go oh wow I definitely want to talk to this person so the way that that has to work is you need some black belt what I call black belt branding and so at the bottom let's start at the bottom if you're on white belt with this you've got nothing You've got no LinkedIn, you've got no resume, no cover letters, you're not out talking to people. So that you've probably got nothing happening. And so the amount of impact you're having on a recruiter is nothing. At the second level is you've got, if you've got a resume, that's a great start. Um, your resume could possibly be written for the past and not the future. So your resume might look a bit like an obituary. So the amount of impact you're having on a recruiter is about 5% of what's possible. At a green belt level, this is someone who has a tailored resume and a cover letter. So that's great. So you're tailoring your resume for particular roles, it's positioning you for the future, and you've got a cover letter. That's great. But you're only having about 25% of the possible impact on a recruiter, and the reason being is because you haven't got LinkedIn. So the next one 
and that's Blue Belt. This is someone who has a tailored resume, a cover letter, and they're on LinkedIn. They may not necessarily have much in there, but they're on there. Now, the percentage of impact that you're having on a recruiter is about 40% because your LinkedIn might not necessarily be telling the story. Again, it could be written like an obituary or you haven't got any content in there. So there's still so much more that needs to be done. At the next level, someone who's got red belt, this is someone I would say we probably see most between, uh, probably around the, the blue and the red. So if you're at red belt, you're, you've got a tailored resume, you've got a cover letter and your LinkedIn is fully search engine optimized. So in other words, if a recruiter or one of those search consultants went out trying to find you, could they find you? Would you turn up in those search results? Because someone out there is trying to find you and we just want to make it really easy. So up until that point, it's very much a pull strategy and people coming to you. But what we really need to do, and this is what a black belt will do, a black belt will have all the pulls sorted out, which is everything under the under uh, from levels uh, five and below. So all the pull will be done. Now that they've sorted out the pull, so attracting people to you, now we're ready to go and approach the market because I have all my ducks lined up. And at this level, at Black Belt, you've got 100% of the impact that's possible for a recruiter. And to do that, you need a tailored resume. So a resume that's written for your future and positions you for the role that you want, not the role that you've had. You've got a cover letter. You, and again, positioning you for the role that you want, not the roles you've had. You have a fully search engine LinkedIn, uh, search engine optimized LinkedIn profile. So in other words, you can be found really, really easily. If I went off and did searches on, you know, accountant Brisbane. If I did a search on mechanical engineer. If I did a search on um, IT con consultant or whatever it might be, are you easily found? And then the next one is your resume is listed on resume listed searches so that um, those job boards that recruiters go to can find you. And the last and not the least is your job search strategy. So who are the people that you're going to? Have you found the recruiters and the hiring managers? What are your scripts? What are you saying when you go to approach them so that when so that they do want to connect with you, they want to get to know you and so when roles become available you are out driving your search you are not sitting back waiting to be asked so i hope that gives you that process of being able to build your brand this is about building your brand you so that you can have more control over your job search strategy as opposed to it being in control of you